Hey everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It's a little after 8 p.m. on Thursday, January 7, 2021. And I tell you that because it's cold. And uh, that said, this is it. This is KC Tool Hall number 50. And I won't lie, I originally had something really big planned. And at some point in time, I'm, I'm optimistic that I'll make that happen. But uh, for all intents and purposes, the way things kind of kind of round out, I think this actually will turn out to be a pretty cool video. Some of you might actually enjoy it more. I think it might be more universal. I don't know. Both of the the original concept for the video and this one, uh, I think, will uh, at least have intrigue, and I would imagine the majority of you will will enjoy it. So uh, that said, this goes back a long time, and in fact. Got a got a glove up here. That's right. You know it's a good video when we when we brand the gloves, right? <laughs> so uh, if you recognize the brand uh, of the glove, you'll see that it was Hazet, and that that would tell you what you need to know that this video is 100% from Hazet. So um, pretty big video in and of itself. Again, not near as big as what I had planned, and uh, you know I ran into some some issues. Uh, it was Christmas time, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, and I also need, like, expensive shop equipment. <laughs> and, uh, long story short, though, uh, we've probably had well more than 50. A lot of times I don't number them. Uh, sometimes, like, the Easter specials, uh, things that kind of get, like, rushed in that are new tools that are available. But uh, numerically, what we've actually numbered, this is 50. And it's going to be pretty dadgum cool. So as always, you get a bit of thanks. Uh, we may need that later. This is Philo number two is what they're currently shipping. And uh, then you also, when you exceed the $100 mark, you pick up the German Tool sticker pack. So uh, where do we want to go with this one? Well, we've got a text message coming in, so I'll, I'll check that. Okay, doesn't look too pressing. <laughs> and uh, I guess what we need to do is uh, start start here. We're going to build our way up for you. This is an item that's always kind of been on my little wish list. You know, one of those things like if I, you know, buy a screwdriver and a socket that I need and some other random item and I'm at like $45 and I need something to get free freight, it would be something like this. <laughs> and, uh, didn't necessarily need a tape measure, but the thing that's sort of unique about this one for me here at the house is that this is going to be metric. And uh, sometimes I thought for like video comparison purposes that would be advantageous. I'm old school, I do everything, you know, fractional, and uh, this will kind of allow me to do that without having to reach for the calipers or something. So, uh, what this is, it is going to be Hazette's part number 2154N 2, the 2 being 2 meters. Uh, it was $8.08. .08. This actually might have not been. More on that later. Uh, sadly, this is made in China. You're not getting anything like. You know, super amazing, 100% German. Uh, is it a good tape measure? I honestly don't know. I do like the color. Uh, it's unique. It's going to stand out. It's got a belt clip. And uh, let's just go ahead and get it open. See what we've uh, got to talk about, shall we? So, blister packs out of the way. Tape measure. We're going to leave that face down for now. <laughs> and, uh, actually, I'll put it face up and just read this. So, uh, it is in German. Here's English. So, 2 meters long, 16 millimeter wide blade. Uh, reduces flexure. Uh, that's an interesting translation there, but I kind of like it. Lockable with a side button. Side button. Where? They must mean slide button. Uh, I wouldn't consider that a... Yeah, it was slide. I just misread it. That's, that one's totally on me. I was like, side button? Really? I've never seen anything like that. But yes, it's just a classic slide. Uh, so that's what that is. My, my apologies. <laughs> and then a uh, special hook at the end of the blade for interior and exterior measurements. It's got shock absorbing due to two component housing. And it's got a belt clip, high quality spring guarantee that the blade is automatically pulled in. It is a coated blade and it's got double sided graduation. So that's about all there is there again. Simple, uh, easy packaging, so no complaints on my end. That said, let's check it out. When they said side button, I was picturing something over here and I was like, but that locks, it's typically like a pause, right? You know, if you've got the little press button here, you can stop it release and it retracts uh, but it's not like a lockable button on the side ever so anywho there's the belt clip nothing crazy it's actually not too stiff uh, some people like them stiff I don't I like it to have a little flex in it uh, part number is easy to see again there's the slide there is our our blade so again we can hook from here we can actually hook from here and 
So the bottom side, which we would typically not use, you've got feet at the top and you've got meters down there at the bottom. Uh, flipping it over, it's the same thing, so it's a dual scale, so that's gonna work well. But there it is, it's simple, it's classic, it's just a simple slide lock, not side lock. <laughs> and, uh, let's test the spring out from, let's make it a foot, just so it's kind of like a more typical measurement. So just a little past 12 inches here, let's see what we think of the spring. Okay, that ran into the mat, so we'll do it again. <laughs> and, uh, uh, here we go. So this is about 16 inches. Not bad, we'll see. I don't know that this is going to last a real long time with heavy use, but uh, typically the way I, I operate, uh, this is the tape measure I had for years. It was all I had. It's still fine, still functional, obviously it's worn a little bit. This is one that I brought in here uh, long ago for review. Again, it's got the slide lock just like that one. But I did this mainly just because it's massive and the high contrast with the work mat here in the bench, regardless which surface I film on, it's just easier for you, the viewer, to kind of see the measurement. Um, at work, uh, depends what I'm doing. If I always like to use the smallest tape possible. Uh, typically, I have to use a 25 footer because I'm inventorying things and I have to go and measure, you know, typically everything's 20 feet. Uh, some solid rounds are going to be 12, but then I get some things that are 24 feet. Um, so in those cases, I do that if I'm like messing around with pallets or something. I carry a little 12 footer like the Stanley over there. So this one I'm just going to use around the shop and it'll probably appear in videos from time to time when we want to have like a quick metric scale for people. So uh, that's what that is. Now I've got to tell you, this tool haul coincided with something special back in September. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and slide this over here, and uh, this is the Hazette 916HP. It debuted sometime in September of 2018, so this past September, September 2020, would have been the two-year anniversary of this thing. Uh, this was a big deal at launch. It's still kind of a big deal just because this is overkill, okay? If you routinely, you know, break off anvils, whatever you're doing, if you're not happy, if you have gear sets that have to constantly be replaced, uh, if you just find that your half-inch ratchets that you continually use and upgrade and break again are lackluster, this is probably for you. For everyone else, it's honestly overkill. And that's because it's built to roughly double the DIN ISO standards. Uh, so basically what that means is it's going to be really hard to break. It can take some abuse. And for a typical user or for someone that takes care and kind of sizes things appropriately, uh, for the application at hand, it's kind of an heirloom lifetime type of a ratchet. Uh, the 916 HP is going to be half inch drive. Uh, it's got 90 teeth. That's something that's going to be common across the HP lineup. 90 teeth, 360 degree circle. You got a four degree return. And then just everything is over engineered on this thing. Uh, out of all, and granted, I now, you haven't seen them all, but at this point in time, uh, I currently own a lot of ratchets, a lot more than I ever thought I would own. That said, it's it's not near as bad as some of you. Uh, I would fall in that category on the screwdriver side of things. But uh, ratchet, I would still say it's a modest collection at this point in time. Some pretty nice ones, but still pretty modest. Uh, for years, I just always used Craftsman. That's what I had. That's what I used. Uh, sometimes if I was using like some toolkit that I had nearby, it was whatever kind of junk that had, right? And then... Uh, the most recent half inch that I would have bought, because keep in mind I'm typically using 3 eighths, uh, would have been the Tecton rotary head or swivel head, whatever you prefer to call it. Uh, that's actually still sitting on a uh, transmission jack, so it's been doing its thing. This I've had for quite some time. Uh, it's actually kind of dirty. My apologies about that. I don't think it's really showing up on the camera. But uh, I've used the snot out of this. Uh, a lot of the little side projects, the RAM revival, some of those types of videos. If you see them, you've probably seen this guy busted out quite a few times. And I absolutely love it. As things stand right now, with what I have open, and more importantly, with what I have a lot of seat time with, you are looking at my favorite half-inch drive ratchet. Now, there's one thing. It's not really a deal breaker. It's kind of just I'm not used to it. I respect why it's not there, but at the same time, I'm just accustomed to having it. And when I flip it over, uh, you'll probably quickly figure out what it is. Now, we've got Hazette branding, we've got a two component handle, you've got a hanging hole if you're a pegboard type person. If I get that to focus, 
a really really nice etching it's not lasered anything trees that's gonna that's gonna be there too if you ever forget what it was uh, or you need to order a rebuild kit which yes this is serviceable those are available uh, they have their own lube as well but 916 hp little easter egg they've got hazettes there this is kind of a matte finish and then you get to the back of the head and it's polished um i'm the type of person i realize most people i think that's still the case would prefer chrome I prefer matte chrome. I think this looks better. It's you can see like this looks pristine, you know, and then this is just like oh well, that might look good if the guy cleaned it. Uh, I don't really like the polished shiny stuff. That's just personal preference there, of course. Um, but it feels really good. The thing that's missing, if you're accustomed to it like me, it's the quick release, right? That's just something. Everything I had, you know, outside of a few things at work, you know, when I was in high school, it was always push button and that's just what I was accustomed to I can totally see the advantage for not having it <laughs> but, uh, if I had to pick one complaint on this that would be it and otherwise I have no complaints thus far and this has been used this has been used a lot and it's not not failed me yet and I love it uh, the handle is a perfect fit for my hand I like the two component on it I've bare handed this a lot, I've used the gloves a lot, uh, it's super cold right now, so the two component handle is nice as opposed to a, you know, uh, non padded handle. But I have nothing bad to say, I absolutely love this thing. So with that in mind, the biggest downside to the HP lineup was this was it, like this was all there was. It was introduced in 2018, it was kind of like a conversation piece, people that got it were like, well this thing's really good, you should try it. And then uh, that was kind of it, you know, typically like if a guy, if I were to bring in a snap-on ratchet, you know, like many of you have been wanting me to do, and I absolutely love it, and I think, oh, God, you know, this thing's amazing, I got a, what do I do? If I have a half inch, I get a three-eighths and a quarter, right? Uh, if I if I have those, and it's like, well, I need a flex head, no, I need a long one, and oh, I need a short one. With the HP, you couldn't really do that, because this was kind of it, you know, it was sort of like their gateway drug, but then you're just left, you know, staring into this epiphany, wonderful world, and there's nothing else for you to do you know and you don't necessarily need one you could get a backup but you can't go out and you know pick this up in quarter or three eighths or anything and uh what we did is uh take advantage of a big sale that coincided with this it was a 20 percent off hazette sale uh, to celebrate the launch of this guy and hazette is not cheap that's why you don't see as many videos on it it's not just something you jump in and oh well yeah here's 40 bucks let me try it it's sort of a premium price. It's like tool truck type of quality and price. It's actually a little cheaper usually. I guess it depends on your dealer. But uh, very easy to go out and get some things. Viha Vera, very economical tools. Then you get into Stavilla and Hazette's and you're paying a little bit more money. It's one of those things you're unsure of and it's like, yeah, no, I don't know if I want to do it. Subsequently, you don't have as many people out there to stumble across to showcase the tool. And uh, what they did uh, the reason KC2 launched this on the ver anniversary is Hazette expanded the lineup, right? So, what we're going to do is take a look at this guy. This is part number 8816 HP. That's, again, the Hyperfine. Uh, it's going to be essentially what you see here, scaled down for 3H drive. So, price point i'm going with right now just because that's the most fair thing for me to do for you and if i gave you the sale price it would be really sad when you went to the website and it wasn't 20 percent off anymore all right uh so this guy right here you'd be looking at 109.88 uh which that's expensive 20 percent off of that you know you're going to come down into the 80s you're getting what i still consider to be a lifetime ratchet here you know it's serviceable if anything breaks uh, if it's not used and abused on the daily type of a thing, it's probably not even going to require service. Uh, your kids, your niece, your nephew, your best friend, whoever, uh, can inherit this from you and it's going to serve them very well. Uh, and in that case, when you look at 80 bucks versus 20 for some lesser brand that's going to you know, break and have to be replaced and doesn't have components to service it, so make sure you get a new one anyway... I feel like this is the better value in the long run. Uh, but that's it. This is also extreme overkill for a 3H ratchet, and I wouldn't have it any other way. While this one, the bragging rights here was 1,000 Newton meters, which, again, is absurd. That's about double what it would be required to be. 
This is 400 Newton meters. Same hyperfine gear sets. You got 90 teeth, four degrees. It's roughly 200 millimeters in length. And I suppose what we need to do now is open it up. Now, typically things like this, I would have opened up and used. This was a special video. These are special tools. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and uh, get them open so I can start using them. Didn't want to get this dirty or you know have it have it give a bad impression to you. But there you see all the particulars kind of across the sides of different layouts and orientations. The boxes are kind of like old school throwbacks. I actually like them. For your story, I like them so much I actually kept the box that the 916 HP came in. So uh, there's the packaging there. Got a nice little protector here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here it is. This is the Hazette. 8816 HP made in Germany exact same setup it's got the matte chrome and then you know it's matte there and then again I don't know why but that's polished um, seems like when German tool reviews made his on that one he thought that was odd but I think he had some reason my logic would be maybe it was just for the uh, you know your rotation switch there but who knows, there it is. Again, same design, same color scheme, two component handle, 3 8 anvil. It's uh, pretty dadgum smooth. Not quite as quiet as, say, the Star Villa, but I don't know that that's a, a huge deal breaker for anyone. Uh, it's weird going from half to 3 8 but I think this is about the right spot. Again, I'm very particular on uh, handled ratchets. I like for the handle to come up the shaft quite a bit. Uh, it bothers me like if this, if the handle stopped here, I would say that's grossly undersized. That's like the Capri breaker bar. I use it, it's been a good tool, but I hate the handle stopping too short. Um, this I don't think is too bad. We'll uh, again use it and see. Case in point, while that uh, sound is fresh on your mind, here's this one. This one seems a bit more broken in as it should. But, uh, like I said, this guy has been a uh, heavy hitter for me, and we'll kind of kind of get a good comparison on those here in a second. Let me toss this to the side, because we're not done yet. Oh, no, when there's 20% off, is that a man's got to keep going, take advantage of, you know, what life throws at you. So, where we're going to jump now, we, we've got the family going. we got half, we got three-eighths. We're going to go down to quarter, right? And uh, the catch is, we're not just stopping there, we're doing something special here. It'll be part number 863 HPB, and uh, the price point now, 89.61, it's 90 teeth, 4 degree return, about 116 millimeters on this one for their overall length, and what is it specced out to that's overkill? 120 newton meters, <laughs> and the uh, catch is, it may not be what you think it's going to be, because, as I lower this down, it's blurry, it's blurry, it's blurry, it's coming into focus. Like, oh, you troll? That's exactly. It's a quarter drive ratchet, right? What's the big deal? Hmm. Does that look look like the other box? I thought that was all black there. Can't quite figure that one out, can we? <laughs> well, uh, there's some tape that I didn't know was present. So let's cut that because, again, I'd like to keep this intact. But uh, if I showed you the other sides of the boxes, it would ruin the surprise for you. So I'll try to uh, avoid that from happening. Toss this to the side. Somehow I got my index pretty dirty. Not sure on what's. This guy's coming out. He didn't get the white packaging. He got blue packaging. Interesting. Uh, both sides there as well. So let's go ahead and uh, get this out of here. Oh, glorious, you're saying. But, you know, troll. It's just a quarter drive ratchet, which is cool. Just show it to us. Well, if you insist. What's going on there? See blue. See my finger. A bit ratchet. <laughs> That's right. 120 Newton meter bit ratchet. You can break some stuff with this if you really want to. Uh, so this is one of those things. I have a few bit ratchets. They're fantastic. They give you a lot better access oftentimes in a stubby or even an offset. Uh, depends on the profiles of everything. Uh, but the bottom line, they're really, really good to have. Now, the ones I have are not 90 teeth. They're not like super high performance. They're not intended to be. It's kind of more of like a budget deal. And it's like, oh, you know, this thing's so handy. <laughs> but, uh, this would be the most overkill um, bit ratchet I know of. Now, I can't say I've done a ton of research on them, but uh, going off the top of my head, I'm inclined to say so. 
<laughs> now, right here, this is just a, a readily available KC tool, uh, Philo bit. So we're gonna check this out, see if we can drop her in. Let me actually take a gander. It looks like it's a spring retainer. So we know that now. Man, it's gonna be uh, tough to get in there. I guess maybe, how much of this is supposed to seat, actually? This may not seat as far as I thought it would. Like, it's, it's kind of wanting to stop right here, naturally. And the thing is, you know that, yeah, it ratchets and everything, but I don't think that's in far enough. So... There we go. And it really press on that which again I can't stress it's really cold out here so this is way better this gives you way more clearance than we had and check that out this is a ridiculously absurd <laughs> uh, fancy bit driver now it's sort of hard to justify 89 bucks for a bit driver but you kind of have what I believe would be the best bit ratchet in the world at this point in time again I could be mistaken but Factor in that I got 20% off of that, and it starts to make a little bit more sense, I do believe. So, uh, there it is. I do kind of wish that the bit was retracted a little bit more, but again, you can see it's right up against the stop. And speaking of that, I wonder... Okay, so it was easier to get out than it was to put in. I was thinking we might have to come in through here to actually tap that out with a hex key or something. <laughs> so, regardless... This is a nice, nice little ratchet here. Now you could totally come in and you could put an adapter and you could use quarter drive sockets if you want to. And that adds to the versatility and it's almost like two tools in one and then 90 bucks or 20% off of that. Considering you've got a quarter drive ratchet and a pit driver, kind of home free. Now, typically I wouldn't advise that, but given that it's just quarter inch stuff, you know, I think you're gonna be okay. Obviously, if it's like something seized, you know, maybe you're on the risk of breaking off your adapter, who knows, but I think it would be the weak link, not the ratchet. So, uh, this thing is tiny, but I do like the handle length on it, uh, and by that I'm talking two component parts there, but uh, let's go ahead and lay these guys out side by side for you. <laughs> it's, uh, again, we got, the, we got the big one here, which again, honest to gosh, that has been my favorite half-inch drive ratchet I've ever owned. Um, you, uh, you can't really tell, let me, like there's just little telltale signs, like see how this is fresh and pristine and then that's got all the, the grease and the dirt marks and everything. But rest assured that thing has been used and put through the paces and when I tell you that it's my favorite, I say that after using it all this time. So, 20% uh, off, 20% off. We got a bit ratchet that we can actually use an adapter for if we want to run sockets with it, treat it as a nut driver as well. Uh, 3 eighths, which that should be bread and butter for me. Uh, I use this thing every chance I get. That's why in part I've left the Tecton one. Literally it's right now. I could take you under the truck. It's hanging off the transmission jack because this is my go-to. <laughs> so, didn't stop there. Oh no. Uh, we, we got one more item for this big KC tool haul number 50. And it's so big in fact I'm having a hard time finding a slot over there. What I want to do is grab this real quick. I do not have because uh, keep in mind, these were like a late release, so they were not in the most recent catalogs. This one, I believe I showcased this when I got the 916 HP. Sort of highlights everything. Uh, again, this is the 916 HP. It's the hyperfine tooth, reversible ratchet, uh, small operating angle, 4 degrees. Let's use it in tight spaces. 90 degree teeth. Sorry, 90 teeth, I should say. Uh, the locking function of the lever prevents an unwanted switch. Again, that can be an issue when you've got like a taller switch and it inadvertently grazes something in tight spots. 275 millimeters, 595 grams. And then all of this that you've probably been looking at, it's basically double every measurable uh, metric that's of importance to the end user. Um, across the board, and that's sort of what they've maintained with the HP lineup. So. I'm not, I think this launched alongside these two items, this next one we're going to take a look at, and it might very well be the most intriguing for some of you. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it would be the most expensive one that we bought. Uh, it came in right now, it would be $156.82. Again, when we bought it, it was 20% off. I also want to say it might not have been that expensive at that 
you know, initial launch point either. It's going to have the same hyperfine specs we've been talking about, 90 teeth, 4 degree return. Um, this one, just like the 916, I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, okay, this must be some, like, overkill quarter drive, you know. Nope, it's half inch, and it's uh, good to 1,000 Newton meters. And, uh... Let me let me tell you, where this one, uh, going by the specs I pinned down, 275 millimeters roughly overall length, this one's going to be about uh, 414. So that's telling a lot of you, like, oh, hey, you know, you got like an extended or each one. That's, gonna, that's really smart. That's going to open up a lot of doors. You can keep this one kind of pristine, use this one for really breaking stuff free. And yeah, that's pretty much correct. Um, it's one of those things. It's really hard to get to, onto the table. So uh, let me let me read the number off to you. This is going to be 916 HP LG. Now you're thinking like, hmm, 916. That's the same part number here. HP matches LG. What does that mean with Hazette? Some of you might be thinking, ah, I've I've heard that. I've seen it. It's uh, it was something special, wasn't it? Well, let me slide this in from the side here. Okay. There we go. You got the big, big handle. You got made in Germany. You got the thousand newton meters. You, you come up here. Can't really see it too well, but it's got the part number and made in Germany on the shaft. And then you're thinking like, oh, did you get a torque wrench? What's what's the deal? Oh, keep going. That looks about the same. Hmm. Well, wonder what it could be. We got to get the old ballast tooled NWS knife because this one is taped as well. My 3.8 wasn't. I wonder if that means somebody played with a KC tool before it left. Because, uh, again, I think I probably got in pretty early uh, on that. But uh, we'll pull this back. Will this packaging be white or blue? I'm not sure. But we're going to drop this beautiful creature out of here. <laughs> so, oh, buddy. It's white. It's not blue. So uh, the blue would actually kind of be cool. Um, I'm sure white's far more economical. But let's get this guy out of here and try to figure out why this costs more and why it's longer. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's start back here with the handle. And, you know, yeah, okay, Hazette 916 HP looked real similar to this. Got a little bit of fuzz on it. Pull that off. Coming up the shaft, oh, matte chrome, okay, that, that's the same. We've got 916 HP LG made in Germany. Now that to me looks lasered, not uh, etched. If it's etched, it's a much shallower etching. Let's actually grab this and kind of showcase that. Yeah, I mean, this looks more like I stamped it and this is clearly laser. I mean, that you've got depth and character, contour. This is just sort of that smooth laser finish. In terms of the handle, hmm. That one looks a little bit beefier. Now, why would they do that? If this is half-inch drive. Why would the handle be fatter and taller? Uh, actually, there you can kind of see this one is. It is discolored a little, but it's not like super noticeable until you pair it with something like this. So we're going to spin it around. There's nothing crazy. There's that weird, what's going on with that thing? Uh, kind of knurled collar. And then you got Hazette, okay, that's the same. Selector switch, no quick release. Even some of you might've thought, oh, you paid extra for the quick release. You must really love that. There's a ratchet mechanism, make sure it's good. And uh, you're like, well, what is this about? Well, I just turned it all the way this way. And okay, cool, I guess you like, it's one of those fidget spinner things, right? You're thinking, you know, you're sitting there trying to break something free and while you're frustrated, you can just spin this. Well. What happens if we keep spinning it, I wonder? Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you've seen this before on the channel, right? Not from Hazette, but uh, we've got the Coloss from Vera, uh, sort of the, the all-in-one uh, BFH plus ratchet combo. And then we've got the extendable Ghidorah one. And uh, as you might have guessed, this, this can only mean one thing, that we'll eventually compare all these. But let me pause this. I only did that because I knew the card was going to time out in about 30 seconds. So yeah, that's what the LG means. It's kind of like your extended reach, right? And uh, let me let me get the specs as I set that down for you. We're going from one corner of the mat literally to the other corner. It's basically a perfect fit. 
when I told you it starts at 414 millimeters, that was a clue. Uh, in its full extension position, it comes in at 614 millimeters. We added 200 millimeters there. Uh, to break that down, that's roughly 8 inches for those of us old school folks. So, uh, overall length standard configuration for this thing uh, would be just over 16 inches. And obviously, if 200 millimeters is 8 inches, you go from carrying a 16 inch ratchet to a 2 foot ratchet. Okay, uh, 16 to 24 inches, 24 inches being two feet. Two feet generates a whole lot of leverage to break things free. You know that it's an overkill mechanism. I feel like this, you know, it honest to gosh has the same specs as the 916 HP. I don't know what you would have to do to break this, the 916 HP, or even approach those loads. I mean, you would have to be doing something really stupid. Um, at least off the top of my head, I might find myself in a position to do something. <laughs> so, long story short, with this being two feet long, it's kind of serving as a breaker bar at this point, right? And you could get quite a bit more leverage than you're going to be able to yield with the standard half-inch drive configuration. So, um... I'm not going to abuse this. I'm not going to tax it to that degree. Like, there's a lot of people that come in and torture, steps, torture test stuff and break it. I'm not doing that. I spend a lot of money on this, and money doesn't grow on trees, sadly. So, my plan is to keep this, use it. Uh, it'll, don't get me wrong, now this one, which I love, I can kind of keep pristine and anything like super ridiculous, which for me and what I do here uh, would be like suspension stuff, K frame bolts. Uh, you know, the typical rusty, cruddy seize things, this will sort of take over in that role. <laughs> and, uh, then the fact that we can actually loosen it really, really quickly, keep in mind with a breaker bar, uh, which my go-to half-inch breaker bar is now from Pittsburgh. Uh, I was afraid they were going to phase them out for the Icon, so I bought two of them for like $20 on a really good deal. <laughs> and uh, that, uh, no complaints on that. But with a breaker bar, when you break it free, it's very rewarding. But then you don't use the breaker bar to spin the fastener out, right? It's a situation where then you've got to pull it up. You probably have to pull the socket off. Then you have to shove it on, you know, your standard ratchet. And then you can go to town and loosen everything. Something like this eliminates that extra step. You break it free and you just keep going. Then it's like a ratchet for you. And uh, knowing how well this one's performed, it makes me uh, pretty excited to use this guy. So uh, I am not quite sure if we can stop this. You know, like I just loosened it. There it is. It's pretty fluid. I probably ought to back that out more. And I think it'd be, this is about as far back as it's going to go. And we went the wrong way. So we're going to go as far, far to the loose as we can, right? Uh, which is there a maximum here? I don't know. I'm going to consider that to be about as far as anyone will take it. Pretty fluid. I mean, it's got a bit of drag on it, but I mean, you don't want it to slide out. And you especially don't want it to slide out when you're breaking something that's honestly seized up. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to pick a random point roughly halfway. Again, you can see this keyway here. And I think that's fully hidden when this is all the way down. So let's try to go just... Random point about halfway there. And can I tighten this up now? Let's find out. Am I going the right way or the wrong way? Must be going the wrong way. Unless there was a maximum open point. I don't know of. Uh, let's see. All right, well, we found the maximum open point here. I'm <laughs> running this entire thing off. So I now understand how it works uh, properly. So we've got a lot of threads here that I'm not going to make you sit and watch. Maybe I lied, maybe I'll time lapse it. I don't know yet. I haven't edited the video. <laughs> anyway, back to what we were trying to do. Ridiculously long. Two feet of Hazet HP power, right? So we just spin this loose, and now let's check again. There's really no noticeable difference there. Essentially, once this is broken free and open, it's the same all the way up until you take this completely off, which you don't want to do. And uh, there's no noticeable difference there. Now, what I want to do, we now know that this is tight, right? So not going anywhere. It's very solid. Spin it loose. This slides down. Tighten her up. 
very good. Right here, note, again, that keyway is totally hidden. Let's break it free. And I just want it to be here. Can I tighten that? Yes, so this is pretty cool. What this means, let's get it open all the way. If you need maximum leverage, and we're gonna assume you're low buck, you know, you don't have a two post or four post lift, you got the car up on jack stands. A lot of times, if you're coming in, your point of resistance, you know, you can get the huge breaker bar in there, but then you've got the concrete, right? The floor. Can't go up tall because you've got the sheet metal, the underbelly of the car, and then you've got like a, a narrow workable range there, right? And you might be about to break it free, but the handle, way, way on this side of the fulcrum, it's hitting concrete, so you need it to be shorter. I can't go lop off uh, my Pittsburgh breaker bar and weld it. Now, granted, I could, but typically you'd have to be like, oh, geez, I can't use the 24 inch. Let me go grab the 18 inch. And again, it's a deal where the 18 inch might clear, but having 20 or 22 or 23 inches of leverage would be far better, right? Uh, and typically, what I find with people with breaker bars. Everyone has the huge one, like the two-footer, and then it's like, there's this huge range where everyone's like, ah, oh, no, 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 yeah, and you've got like a 12-inch. So you've got like standard, and you've got ginormous, and there's that big gap in the middle, and people don't typically have, say, the 16-inch, or an 18 or a 20-inch, it's just standard, 12-inch, and then the jumbo two-footer. So this opens up a world of possibilities, because now, if I want to come halfway like we were trying to do earlier, boom. Infinite adjustment in this thing. Whatever length you need to dial this to, you can do it. That makes a really, really smart profile uh, and adds a lot of versatility to this. Again, whereas Harbor Freight, it's too long. If I go in and I grab my Capri, it's not strong enough or it needed to be longer. This, we can go, again, from 16 to 24 inches, which is just ridiculous. Uh, coming in right now, you're gonna need to pretend that you don't see this. That's, uh, that's my way of telling you this probably in a, in a later video, but I've got a Hazette socket here. That uh, kind of follows the same funky setup where everything is matte chrome and then it's polished. Everything is matte chrome and then it's polished, right? So let's uh, throw this on this guy. Hazette plus Hazette, that is Pretty daggum good fitments. And uh, you can listen to the sweet sounds again. Let's pull this guy off. There we go. Again, it's a little more challenging with a tripod in front of you. But uh, that's, that's kind of what we've got going there. Now I'm gonna come in. We've got our Craftsman socket here, uh, which again, that's still primarily, I'm sorry, that's Napa. This is Craftsman, so we're gonna throw this on, my classic 15 16 that I use all the time at work. Really good fitment. Again, you will be surprised how well the Craftsman sockets seem to fit. I know everything's standardized, but if you've got a ton of different sockets and you honestly go through and play test them, you'll see that a lot of sockets with different brands of ratchets like are very, very poor fitments, even though things are to be standardized. The Craftsman socket, these are granted the old school USA ones I have. They fit really well. There's a couple of brands that they actually fit the ratchets better than their own sockets, which is bizarre. But uh, anyway, right here, this is a 1 and 1 16th from Napa. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw this guy on. That mates up perfectly. Interestingly enough, this is also a USA socket. Uh, relatively thin, too, for inch and a 16th. I can't remember if I got this for crank bolts. I kind of think I did, but I thought that was an inch and an eighth. I don't know, there's some some good reason I have that. Uh, I'll have to think about that. Probably lose sleep over it tonight, in fact. <laughs> so that is that. I think what I'm going to do, since this is Tool Hall 50, I'm going to grab a couple other things so we can kind of check it out and uh, do some cool stuff here for you. All right, so kind of the bonus part of the video here, nothing you, you have to see, but things that might make you smile, might give you some enjoyment or get the gears turning in your mind. Right here, what do we have? We've got the giant Pittsburgh breaker bar I told you I've been using. Again, if you watch the Ram Revival, you've seen me use this thing. 
zero complaints with it in all honesty especially at the price point i gave for it but it is two feet basically if you go from the stub of the handle kind of halfway up the fulcrum point there we would be clocking in at the two foot mark so i'm going to come in we're going to loosen this guy and we're going to go all the way out we're going to tighten it back down and uh just so you know <laughs> that i'm not lying to you and let's showcase these as best I can. So I'm going to start here at the business end. Again, one thing I do like about the Pittsburgh is the length of the handle. I would not have objected at all if this one went up a little farther, but as is, uh, it fits my hand quite well, the Hazette. Uh, again, keep in mind, this is just a little bit wider, a little bit longer than what we have on the standard 916 HP. <laughs> so there we go. Pay attention to the diameter of the shaft, keeping in mind that this has to be hollow you know for this to kind of retract into and then check that out right getting close getting close you can see what i'm talking about it's pretty much point to point there uh keep in mind you know this is able to swivel down so going back the other way there we are again we have basically a oversized 916 hp that can go from 16 inches to 24 inches and everywhere in between that's a very key selling point 24 like you know as i mentioned maybe this is your go-to breaker bar and what you're doing right now it's just it's too tight you can't break anything free with it and keep in mind it's also fixed position you're limited by the socket uh, you switch to a 12 point you still don't have the clearance you need this 24 inch from Hazette, we can slide that down and we can make it 21 and fit perfectly and still maintain maximum leverage to make the job as easy as it can be. So that is pretty cool. Now right here, where did I put it? Somewhere. I should have had, thought I had two. Apparently I didn't grab that or I sat it somewhere. Anyway, I had meant to grab a uh, Deep Craftsman 3H drive don't seem to see it so we'll just roll with this this is relatively new uh gotten quite a bit of use out of these two the little uh tecton set so we're going to come in line that up again pretty good fitments got a super nice ratchet and you got a tecton socket there pair very well again build things as you need to now this is where we can do some stupid fun stuff right so uh we've seen the standard bit in there the Next logical step would be to come in and like I told you, let's let's make this a bit driver. Uh, in all these adapters, which I think you will have seen that video by now, I brought in everyone but Hazette, which I might bring in Hazette at some point, but that basically sits in there just like a bit. And then I can come in 7 16 very, very common size for me, uh, and small drive stuff, battery cables, things like that. Check that out. Stavilla adapter lets us use this bit driver as a socket, you know, a quarter drive uh, ratchet, if you will. So we'll pull that out. Uh, right here, we can accomplish the same thing. This is from Vera, so we can throw that in the mix. And I'm telling you, that spring is a bit stiff right now, which is good. It provides good retention. Uh, hopefully it'll break in though. Same thing here. These pins on the Veras tend to get stuck. And, uh, I'm not feeling like having that happen tonight because my feet are starting to lose feeling in them. Uh, right here, this is one of the 89 millimeter bits from Vera, this being a T25. So with this, you know, you're typically thinking like, okay, Phillips and deck speakers and tight quarters, dash work, those types of things. Keep in mind, it's all plug and play, right? So, I mean, if you come in and I don't know, maybe it's, you know, uh, coil packs or something, they have a T25 fastener. If this bit ratchet that you invested a lot of money in is your best option, you know, use it, right? I mean, why not? And uh, it worked beautifully right here with the 89 millimeter stuff. Now this is a really good way. You're thinking, okay, well, that's a good idea. I'd actually do that. I know an application and what I deal with daily at work or at home where I need an extension and having the bit ratchet with the 90 teeth and the four degree return, it would be killer. How, how's it going to work running an extension? You know, you show the little dinky adapter. That's great. It's probably not going to break. Well, think back to the Philo smart blade setup, right? So this is essentially for quarter drive sockets, but then it's a really long extension. 
and it ends right there like you would throw again in philo or a, you know a impact or something I keep getting stuck on my my cord there but if i could get this to line up man that's tight i'm not sure that this one's gonna mate that well actually in fact i don't think it is it's just a little bit off hmm well, the intentions were good here. We're gonna scrap that for now. But uh, let's try this because again, same same concept here. Uh, the Philo Smart Blade with the VHA. So this is, as you should know, the magnetic nut setter. Let's come in, throw that, perfect. So this is what I was going for there. Obviously some brands I think would fit. Realistically, this should. But I do remember I've had some issues with this fitting other things as well. So uh, bottom line though, in this case, if we're doing 5 16 uh, my stereotypical 3 8 blue. You can treat this if you need to as a quarter drive ratchet. So that again, expands your versatility and go to town. Another thing to do, maybe, just maybe, all you're going to do with this, you know, is treat it as a bit ratchet. And you do not like this. You're sitting there and you're like, God, that's so hard to get in. That's such a tight fit, which granted it's already loosening. I can tell because that was super easy compared to the first time we put it in. If you don't need the super tight confines, the really compact close quarter setup, check this out, okay? We'll pull that out and you could use something like this, a bit adapter from VHA, okay? You're still gonna be pretty compact, but now, if this is the length that you want and you're just gonna go to town treating this as a really high-end bit ratchet, you've got a quick release and you can go from number two Phillips, T25 Torx, T15 Torx, slotted, uh, you can go to star, whatever, and it's all just, you know, as easy as your favorite adapter in this case. Now, as I mentioned, this has gotten a lot looser just in what, five or six, you know, cycles in and out, so that's great news because it was pretty stubborn when we started, I'm not gonna lie. But case in point, that's still tight, it still requires a little effort, but it's nothing like it was that first time. So this is probably the world's best bit ratchet. Um, again, could be mistaken, that's all subjective, but in terms of specifications, granted, you're going to basically ruin the fastener uh, before you would get to a point that you would mess the ratchet up. But uh, this is a very, very nice little tool. And again, you can play around with it, do some stupid fun stuff. Whatever sets your, sets your uh, ship at sail, I suppose, right? So that's what we picked up. We've got the uh, 3 8 drive, which honestly should see a, quite a bit of use for me. Uh, this one we already had. It's the workhorse. It's why I knew I would be happy picking these up. And then, of course, we've got the uh, 8816... Uh, HPLG, I think that's the part number. No, I'm sorry, 916 HPLG that uh, lets us go from 24 fully extended, 16 fully retracted, and again, anywhere and everywhere in between, uh, which is super cool. This, the knurling on it, is really nice and uh, it's effortless. Really, I mean, to break it free, there's nothing involved there. Just a, a pretty nice little setup there, so. That's that's what we did for Tool Hall 50. It is not what I was initially going to do. I will tell you that right now. Uh, the hope is at some point in the future, if funds allow and space constraints allow, we'll go ahead and we'll do what I had planned. And I do think everyone will be uh, pretty interested in that as well. <laughs> so, surprisingly, and all the time I've had these sitting around, I haven't seen any videos on them, so uh, I guess that's good news as well. Hopefully it's new to some of you. and might have gone under the radar. Obviously you've missed the sale at this point. But uh, if you're thinking, man, you know, I love that ratchet you brought in a long time ago. Wish they had that in 3 eighths. Or man, if they did that with that like, you know, hybrid Coloss thing or what Ghidorah does where it was extendable, I'd buy it at that point in time. Well, they kind of have you covered now. So, uh... Quarter drive, I can't remember if they have one or not. I kind of think they do, but I'm also not not 100% sure. All right, wouldn't have been a good video if I left you hanging like that. They do actually have one. It is their part number 863 HP. That'll be the standard quarter drive. 
Uh, so I realize a lot of you, especially like if you do Japanese and European cars for your bread and butter stuff, really like having the quarter drive ratchets. That's where you'd want to go. I'll try to remember to link that down below. 9403. That's the list price right now. I'm thinking if I remember right again, this was back in September, but I want to say this is my number one target, the 3 8 And then I think I opted to do the bit ratchet because I thought I'd get more use out of it and could adapt it, kind of. Plus, my other logic was I've had two of the stall villas at that point. Uh, one with, you know, the comfort grip and one bare-handled. Um, and then also, this guy was pretty expensive, and I kind of thought it would make a good video for everybody later on to compare and contrast them. And just off the top of my head, I'm kind of thinking this design might be the best. We'll have to revisit them. I don't use those often. Uh, but uh, we'll see what we think so nonetheless uh, once again we got the bit ratchet over there I'll have all this link down below for your convenience that would be 863 HPB uh, and then when we come in we've got the 863 HP would be your quarter drive this of course half inch 916 HP this one same part number plus an LG that's for you know the length the extension if you will and then the odd duck out to the 3.8 is 8816 HP so uh, others are all three digit part numbers this one got a four so uh, for whatever that's worth to you that is what we did for tool haul number 50 uh, again cannot wait to put these in use this will probably be my most used I'm going to make a point to use this uh, every chance I get now, at least here initially, kind of get a good feel for it. I think I'm going to really like it. And then uh, that said, though, if, if you're on a budget and you really want the 3 8 one, if you can still get the Pittsburgh before they take it away and charge more for the Icon one, I've used this quite a bit uh, in the few months I've had it, and it's, it's been pretty damn gum good. So I've done some, some pretty... <laughs> pretty sketchy stuff with it for the short time it's been around and it's still with me and like i said i bought two just because i was afraid they'd take them away and uh, hey uh, zero complaints there so again work with what you got kind of prioritize your needs if you get the most use out of the 3h drive do that pick up a giant two foot breaker bar for cheap uh, if you're all set on 3h you've got a million different ratchets but you need something like this put your money there and uh, then again, if you're Mr. Bit Ratchet, that's kind of like your bread and butter. Uh, you treat that like I do screwdrivers. You've got to have the latest, the greatest, the newest. you got to try it all out, compare it, see what you like the best. I think that's going to be, uh, that would be a pretty tough one to unthrone. So not to be forgotten, the old, the old two meter tape that we brought in this time around. So I'll get you a better thumbnail here, hopefully. But uh, that was Two Hall 50. I definitely hope you enjoyed. Again, if you've used the 916 HP that's been out for two plus years now, how are you liking it? How is it treating you? How would you compare it to other brands, whether that be Snap-on Mac Matco or whether it be other German brands? Uh, kind of the more information people have, the better decision they can make. But uh, zero experience with this guy. Again, I've honestly left these in the box because I didn't want them to look bad when we showcased them. Uh, this one should start seeing a lot of usage. Currently, I'd say my favorite 3 8 is my style villa, but uh, we'll see how this one racks, rates up, stacks up against it. I'm by far sure this is the most expensive bit ratchet I've ever bought. I think it's probably the most expensive quarter drive ratchet I've ever bought, even though it's really not. Um, but it can sort of adapt to it, so I'm hoping it's the best one because otherwise, all those real cheap ones or ones that are included in like $40 kits with tons of bits uh, will make this look really bad. But I have a pretty good feeling it's, it's gonna, gonna stand up and please me pretty well. And then this guy right here, as I mentioned, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, it's not gonna be used all the time, but when it is, I think it's certainly gonna be appreciated. The biggest selling point, again, not just 16 and 24, but everywhere in between. Uh, that's a versatility that you don't get even with a lot of the kind of specially designed extendable ratchets. So uh, that said, these have been sitting here a long time. They are no longer going to be in the floor. They're going to be in the box. They're going to be getting used. And most importantly, you'll get to see a video on them. So uh, if you've used any of these, whether it be the uh, OG 916 HP, if you cashed in on the 20% off sale and you've been using Mr. $90 Bit Ratchet uh, for what, like five or six months now let people know how you like it how it's holding up if you would rate i mean do you honestly think like the philo or the vera or the viha 
uh, is better for you know like a quarter of the price is it a deal where you have like some no-name Taiwanese one that you like better let people know because again that helps them make the best decision possible on how to spend their money um, but like I said, I have a feeling, uh, even if this didn't turn out to be your favorite ever, I think it's, everyone could agree, it's probably the most overbuilt one. And uh, that honestly means something to a whole lot of people, so uh, myself being one of them. But kind of have almost the entire lineup here. Maybe at some point in time, tool of the day or something, uh, I'll spring for the quarter drive. But like I said, it's, it's not a pressing need. I'm kind of three-eighths and a half inch most of the time. Although I have used that Stavilla quarter drive a ton, I think a lot of that was just due to because of all the dash and interior work I've done. But I will quit rambling. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Um, if, if you did, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Again, whatever you've used of this and what you can compare it to, feel free to tell people. If you love these, if you swear by them, if you bought them all and you agree that they're built great, but you just you think your money is better spent with something fractions of the price tell people um like i said this is my favorite half inch drive ratchet at this point in time and i've got high high hopes for this one um you know the story we've covered it a few times here so i am really really cold and the the numbness in my feet is like moving up to my knees so i think i'm gonna head back in but uh, i do hope you enjoyed it and i will catch you back here for the next 50 KC tool loss. I don't really know that we'll get that high, but uh, if we do, we ought to have some pretty cool stuff by that point in time. But uh, nonetheless, I do really hope to do that uh, big item, if you will, that I was teasing you with. It's uh, one of those things. I think this makes a pretty, pretty cool 50th tool haul, but uh, that one would, it would be a big item. I think it would go over well. I think people would enjoy seeing it. And uh, I do hope to eventually make that happen. So. Uh, with that said, thanks to everybody for checking the channel out. I do hope you're enjoying it. And, uh, I'll catch you back here for more action from the shop.